Bresnahan, Ali, and Trudell down at the arena. They will handle the postgame duties. Round three goes to the Lakers. They take a 2-1 to one series lead. Lakers made some great adjustments, a suffocating defense, and a 30-8 to eight run in the second, a big third to break open this game and take a 2-1 to one lead, James. Yeah, yeah, it was a very impressive second quarter. Uh, the first quarter wasn't quite sure if, you know, the defensive assignments have been, you know, picked up. They were getting some shots, but then I think the collapsing defense in the in the second quarter, AD getting up on the three-point shooters, they weren't allowing those uh, Clay Thompson or Steph Curry to come off those picks without any help. Uh, they did a really good job of rotating to get to the shooters. Um, you know, and AD, of course, with four blocks and the way he dominated inside, that got them going in the second quarter. They got some steals, 10 steals total, deflections, uh, and then they got out and set the pace. And they got some easy buckets, and they got the lead, and uh, it was a good defensive performance tonight. James, keep, it's beginning to look a little, a little bit like 2020, just a little bit. That Laker defense yeah. was so good in the middle two quarters. Remember last game, it was Golden State that ran away with the, the game because it was middle two. And great response by the Lakers. They got absolutely blown out in game two up in the Bay Area. Come down tonight and, and stick, up, stick Golden State with their own blowout. I mean, that's just a yep. huge, huge turn of events right there. Uh, by the way, timely three-point shooting, too. Lakers actually had two more threes than Golden State did tonight. I'm glad you brought that up, Rez. Yeah, I think it's what? a huge underrated stat that I really wasn't paying much attention to until a few moments right? ago. So I'm glad you said yeah. 15 of 31 <clears throat> efficient, 48%. Just 13 of 44 from Golden State. Remember, they had 21 in each of the first two games for just 29%. Glad you brought that up. Yeah, the 10 steals, 27 assists, all the little things, the little things that make up for a win they were able to get starting it, in that second quarter. Yeah, and Brez, big game. Sorry to jump in there. Uh, it, we talked about those middle quarters in game two when the Lakers were outscored 84 to 47. Look at the difference between game three. 63 points in those middle quarters. 84 to 38, so they basically flipped it on the Warriors, 39% uh, to 49%. Uh, Three-point field goals, 7 of 18 compared to 4 of 16. So definitely uh, a big difference there for the Los Angeles Lakers. Listen, I think before we get into individual performances, you got to credit Darvin Ham, the staff, and the entire Laker team for the adjustments they made. I mean, we gave all that credit to the Warriors because that's what the champions do in Game 2. They came out with a different game plan. I thought the Lakers going to the Lonnie sub, Darvin, that was a nice idea. Lonnie, fresh legs, mm -hmm. did a really good job uh, coming off the of screens, chasing guys, um, doubling at the right times, and just playing a smart basketball game. Really impressive the way Vando and, and, and Reeves were switching so they could then switch on the screens. Mm -hmm. AD uh, coming up more to contest Clay's open threes so he wasn't walking into them. All those little things, big game James, is like a chess, chess match, yeah. right? So you, you got to credit the Lakers. Yeah, it's, it's one thing to play with maximum effort, which they do most of the time. But when you're playing a team like Golden State, not only do you have to have maximum effort, you have to play really smart and know what they're trying to do. And in today's game, I think they had their antennas up. Uh, some of those quick hitters that they were getting, especially Clay, when they when they, when Draymond passes, sets a pick, they come off of quick hitters. If no one's there to help, they get those shots. But tonight, I thought that they were switching some, they were collapsing. Uh, you know, sometimes even two people uh, stunning at, at, at the shooters, especially Curry and Clay, And, uh, you know, I, I just thought that was really good to stop that at the front of their offense and force guys like Wiggins and Poole and other guys to take the shots. They did a good job of that. Brez, I thought Draymond Green was so good <clears throat> defensively in game two. And we've seen it over the last nine years so many times, what he's able to do, how he's able to disrupt what a team wants to do offensively and how he – played AD in game two was a big yeah. factor in how that game went. Now, AD was missing some, some easy shots that he usually hits. Tonight, he hit those early on, but also it was Draymond who got in foul trouble and Draymond that got frustrated. That's just kind of the way the game flowed. Yeah, uh, Draymond, two points tonight. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's all he did tonight. Um, what a big turnaround for the Laker front court. Uh, Jermichael Green, no longer the element of surprise. Mm -hmm. He had two points as well. AD's defense, you know, it must have been an odd number game, Geet, because he was definitely on that battle down below. And, and Brez, you know what was shown right there that you're not going to see it maybe in this 
you know, uh, box score, you'll see it in, in some analytical stuff, how, how many deflections yes, he had. Sure. Ball going to Steph mm -hmm. on a wide open three. Deflected out of bounds, now we get to reset. Mm -hmm. That happened a number of times. And listen, he was banged up, there's no question about it. I mean, he got the shot to the ribs when he and Draymond got, got tangled up. Uh, fell hard yeah. a couple of times. It's a physical series, but him not coming out of the game and, and, and him not getting much rest, uh, it, you got to tip your cap to AD. Listen, he heard a lot about it. Over the last 48 hours. There's no question about it. Anything on TV, anything on the radio, oh, yeah. everyone likes to you know, point out everything. When he has a bad offensive game, he turned it all around tonight again. He did. And it really didn't, you know, he started out a little slow. He yep. started out a little slow. I wasn't quite sure if he was going to get up on some of those shots. Bigs usually like to zone out in the paint They were anyway. dropping early, James, Dropping right? early. And it was costing them. Yeah. And, and it was costing them big. And so I think he, he's kind of toward the end of the first quarter. He must have got a, a message from the coaching staff. Hey, look, because second quarter, he was a new player. New energy. Felt like he flipped the switch on, and that's when he started to go to work. Inside offensively, defense, getting up on those shots, and that's when the defense started to kind of stop Golden State from, from getting what they usually get. All right, guys, let's go back downtown. LeBron <laughs> is with Mike Trudell. All right, LeBron, you talk about playing to exhaustion, but it's unprecedented in year 20 to have somebody playing this far into the playoffs, this many minutes. Uh, where are you finding the legs as, as you kind of continue to get through this series? Uh, rest. You know, just in between. We playing every other day, so in between days, just get as much rest as I can. Uh, taking care of my body as well, eating the right stuff, make sure my nutrition is right so I can have a full tank and more when I hit the floor. Sprinting down in transition the end of the third, you jump over. You did make yourself run an extra like 30 yards there, though. Yeah, it was either that or crash into our beloved Laker faithful sitting court side. So, you know, I chose uh, to, to, to protect uh, our fans, that's for sure. All right, well, you cleared the landing. Everything was safe. That was fine. So down 40 to 29 in the second quarter, you guys flipped it to an 11 point lead. How did you do it? What were the adjustments? We got stops. We got out of transition. We got the run, get some easy buckets. Slowed the game down by getting to the free throw line, and uh, that allowed us to have 11 point lead ahead. You know, Golden State's going to come back strong on Monday, uh, LeBron. Uh, what's the, the key here aside from rest? Like, as you guys battle, you know, Steph and Claire are going to have something, Draymond going to have something cooked up. Uh, just don't get comfortable. We don't have the. Have the luxury to get comfortable versus a Golden State team. As long as we stay un uncomfortable, knowing that they can they can run off three straight versus us or whatever they want to, if we get comfortable. So it's about maintaining our uh, or maintaining our habits, uh, understanding that this team is very dangerous, and never get comfortable when you hit the floor with these guys. Last one for you, a personal question. Uh, Bronny in the building, going to stay here. We saw USC, just the, the pride that you have in him and, and everything that goes into that. Uh, one of the best days of my life. Um, first of all, congratulations to Bronny on, on his decision he made. Um, you know, I'm super proud of him. Our family is proud of him. Um, for me personally, um, it's even more special to me because it's the first time uh, someone out of my family to go to college. Uh, obviously, I didn't go to college either. So it's just a proud moment to, to see my son uh, go to college, and he's the first one to go to college uh, in my family. So um, super duper proud, super emotional, um, but just super, super duper uh, excited and happy for his journey. And uh, today was a proud day. Uh, I, I couldn't lose today. No matter the, the matter the outcome of this game, I couldn't lose today personally. So. But I'll take this, uh, this cherry on top with this dub, though. Thanks for that. Appreciate it. Real nice job right there. Mike Trudell, the interview of LeBron James and talking about his son, Bronny, who was in attendance and who uh, told everyone today he's going to USC. And that was a pretty cool moment right there for LeBron to say, listen, I'm, this is the first person in our family to go to college. It's actually a pretty, <laughs> pretty cool moment. Um, I do want to talk about LeBron's game. I mean, no shot attempts in the first quarter and even into that second quarter. And he was there five hours before the game getting shots up. So everyone thought he was going to come out with a 20 point first quarter. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have an attempt. Doesn't have an attempt. All of his damage, and he didn't play in the fourth quarter, all in the second quarter and the third quarter. 21 points, eight rebounds, eight assists. Kind of a masterful job. And defensively, what he was able to do. Never ceases to amaze me. Uh, when we saw that graphic in the first quarter, <laughs> zero, 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 I was like, that can't be LeBron. But he did lead the team in assists. He, I think he was trying to get uh, people involved early or he was just a little off. But uh, 
the defense never went away. I remember he ran down uh, that one block shot. Um, on pool was crazy. On pool, yeah. then he ran down Steph Curry's pass and jumped over the chairs. The effort was there. Uh, and then when he had to pour it on, uh, and you know, in the third quarter, you said it. In the, yeah. in the conference room, we said, man, we need LeBron to be on fire in the yeah. third. He got going in the third and the fourth and kind of, you know, it, posting up a little bit more. Yeah. Not, not so much from the perimeter. He was in that elbow area yep. where the defense had to collapse a little bit. And that's why guys are starting to get some, some better shots in the second half. And, of course, when he's going downhill like that, it's like you're not going to stop him. The game when Clay was on him, he was down in that elbow in that post mm -hmm. game. Yeah. And it's, uh, it, it did not go well for uh, for Clay. I mean, LeBron's too strong in, in his career defense, like you said, he, in those middle two quarters. And obviously, he, he felt like maybe he was playing for a little something extra, not just the most important game of the series, which is what he declared in the Memphis series. He, LeBron says game three, that's the big one. So, of course, he wants the Lakers to win, but then he, he revealed to Mike, I can't lose on the day that my son yeah. commits to play basketball at USC. Yeah, so a couple of wins for LeBron today, no doubt. All right, let's hear from Darvin Ham. He's speaking with Mike in the media.